Hello and welcome. This is World of Wastewater. This is part three of a series going over a wastewater exam, which you can find a link to in the description. Print a copy out and share it with others studying at your plant. If you're following along, these questions are numbers 11 through 15. And if you're watching this while you're on the toilet, hit like and subscribe. With that said, let's get started. What is the purpose of a SCADA system? A. Clean grease lines. B. Justify more cleaning crews. C. Control equipment and collect data points. D. Set collection and data points. The answer is C. Control equipment and collect data points. SCADA stands for Supervisory Control and Data Acquisition. On the screen, I put the Wikipedia definition. To put simply, a SCADA system connects our computers to pumps and equipment in the field for process monitoring and control, usually through a PLC, which stands for Programmable Logic Controller. Given the following data, calculate the seeded BOD of this sample. A, 120, B, 52, C, 78, D, 102. The answer is D, 102 milligrams per liter. This question may seem confusing and vague when you first read it, due to there being three samples listed on the chart. However, the middle column, Bottle 4, effluent, is the only one containing a wastewater sample. The others list 0 ml for sample volume. Also, in a normal BOD test, there are multiple bottles of the same sample being tested, which is why the numbering is 2, 4, and 6, to show that there are multiple samples. For the sake of brevity, we are only shown three of them. Before I go on, if you are not familiar with BOD testing, please research it as it is one of the most important wastewater concepts. Let's big brain this and break down the math. This question has three parts to it. In order to find the BOD value of the effluent sample, which contains seed, we must first find the BOD value of the seed itself. For the first part, we will be using the unseeded BOD equation, which is given to us. Now, I don't want anyone to get confused about why this formula says unseeded, but we're using it on the seed blank sample. This is because while the seed blank contains actual seed, there is no additional seed being added to it, unlike with the effluent sample. Let's plug our numbers from the chart into the equation. We first subtract the initial DO, 9.2, from the final DO, 7.2. This equals 2. Then multiply it by 300, which equals 600, and finally divide that by 3, giving us an answer of 200 milligrams per liter. This number is the BOD value of the seed being used. With this, we can figure out how much dissolved oxygen the seed is consuming in any given sample. In our case, we're examining the effluent sample. Unfortunately, the equation for the seed correction factor in part two is not given to us on the exam. You will need to remember it. We take the seed BOD value from part one, 200 milligrams per liter, and multiply it by one milliliter, which is how much seed volume was used in the bottle four effluent sample. Then we divide that by 300 milliliters giving us an answer of 0.66 repeating, which we round up to 0.67 milligrams per liter. This tells us that for every one milliliter of seed we use, it will consume 0.67 milligrams per liter of dissolved oxygen. Now we can figure out how much BOD is in the effluent sample. The BOD seeded equation for part three is included on the exam. So first, we will subtract the initial and final DO of the effluent sample, which is 9.2 minus 5.1, which equals 4.1. Now let's subtract our seed correction factor from this, 4.1 minus 0.67, giving us 3.4 milligrams per liter. When putting this in your calculator, you might get an answer of 3.43. However, if we are taking significant figures into account, it should only be 3.4. If you don't understand significant figures, that's fine. Using 3.43 gives you a pretty close answer as well. So from here, we'll multiply 3.4 by 300, which equals 1,020, and divide that by how many milliliters of effluent was used in bottle four, which is 10 milliliters. This gives us a final answer of 102 milligrams per liter, which was the correct answer, choice D. 
All right, take a nice deep ocean breath and a sip of water. That was a lot, but we still have three more questions to go. Which of the following temperatures on the centigrade scale does a reading of 95 Fahrenheit correspond to? A, 35 degrees, B, 63 degrees, C, 95 degrees, D, 120 degrees Celsius. The answer is A, 35 degrees Celsius. You probably thought we were done with the math questions, but this one's pretty easy and the equation is given to us on the exam. We are going to be converting Fahrenheit to Celsius. We take our Fahrenheit value of 95, subtract 32 from it, this gives us a value of 63, and then divide it by 1.8. This gives us our answer of 35 degrees Celsius. What is the sequence of steps needed for proper operation of a sequencing batch reactor? A. Decant, react, settle, fill. B. Fill, settle, decant, react. C. Settle, react, fill, decant. D. Fill, react, settle, decant. The answer is D. Fill, react, settle, decant. Sequencing batch reactors are really neat. They are a single tank that performs multiple functions. This keeps their footprint quite small. Plants that use this system have at least two of these, and they are usually found at smaller plants handling less than 1 MGD. I would advise you to learn more about SBRs and how to troubleshoot them, as those kind of questions may appear on your exam as well. What time of day are DO levels the lowest in a facultative lagoon? A. Night B. Morning C. All day D. Afternoon The answer is A. Night Facultative lagoons are a simple and effective way to treat wastewater when permits are not very stringent. A traditional facultative lagoon will let Mother Nature do its thing. Photosynthesizing algae that grows on the surface of the lagoon will introduce oxygen into the water during the day. And then at night, when there is no sun, there is little to no oxygen production taking place. These types of lagoons are pictured on the bottom left. They may also be assisted with simple mechanical aeration techniques. Pictured on the middle right is a lagoon that is more similar to an aeration basin using heavy-duty mechanical mixers, and on the far right is a lagoon using small bubble diffusers. Hey, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, then check out my others on this channel. If you want to help me make more great content for operators, I have a link to my PayPal in the description. See you next time on World of Wastewater.